Hello, differential equation students, and welcome back. We are still inside of unit five, okay? And now we're on to 6.2. And we're going to be talking about power series, about something called an ordinary point, okay? An ordinary point. So we should probably get into this idea of ordinary point first. So we have this definition. X equals A is an ordinary point of our standard second order differential equation here. If both P and X and sorry, P of X and Q of X are analytic at X equals A. Analytic meaning that you can write a power series about X equals A, that point. Okay. So here, when I write it out front here, right, it says that I can write that series. Well, what what couldn't I have out here and be able to write for P of X and Q of X? Well, Really, this is actually a decently straightforward question. This would have to be, if this is zero, right, that is throwing, that's going to give me issues, right? That's going to give me some issues. So what we typically do is we go through and we look for points of singularity. These are ordinary points if I can do this thing. Well, then a singular point are points that are not ordinary. Of course, that does help us a whole lot, but... Here in my first example, I'll try to explain how, how easy this can be. Okay. So here in this first one, I have y double prime plus 3x squared y prime plus 5xy equals 0. Um, when I'm going to look at this, I see that 1 is out here. So really, a sub 2 of x is equal to 1. And if I try to like set that equal to zero, right? If I took one and I set it equal to zero, that's clearly not true, right? There's no, right? It has no roots. And if there are no roots, then there are, because there's nothing that makes this part here zero, then all of the A's that I place up here are, or, or, um, are ordinary, okay? So no roots here, so thus, all points are ordinary. Okay, that one would look too easy. Maybe we should try another one here. I have another example here. Again, pause the video if you want time to write it down and try it on your own. All right, I don't think I need to read this one out totally to you, but what I do see is right here is my a sub 2 of x, right? And if I went through this, uh, I would try to set it equal to 0. x squared would equal 1. So x equals, equals plus or minus 1 here, right? So what we say is, okay, the plus or minus 1 makes this 0. So plus or minus 1, when I have x equal to that, they are singular. points and all others are ordinary okay we only care about this first one out here okay if we had uh, our second one here if this second one ended up having roots that matched these ones or the third one, right? Okay. If these two had the same roots that matched into this, then that point, these points, plus or minus, would also be ordinary. And really, that's quite simple. If, if these roots ended up being in here, clearly they have a common factor, so it would be able to be factored out and taken out of this. Okay, that's, that's the whole premise there. Okay, so I'll write down that idea. If a sub 2 of x has the same root or roots as a sub 1 of x and a naught of x, then that x value, let's call it, is also ordinary. Okay. So hopefully that's not too confusing. 
Now, if we continue, right, um, why, why do we even talk about this idea of ordinary? Well, we're getting into this theorem here where x equals a is an ordinary, if x equals a is an ordinary point of my second order differential equation here, then there exists two distinct power series solutions. Okay, there are two distinct ones now. It does say distinct, right, right here. Okay, that takes on this form of this generic power series. We did this in 6.1. Okay, this generic form here, where I have x minus a is where I'm taking it about the point, and I have this like x or a usually equals zero. That's only here to like make things easy because this is our first like real experience with some power series and how we can use them to solve differential equations. In real life, you don't always center it at zero. Okay, that can change. And it does say the radius of convergence will be at least, at least, the distance from that point to the closest singular point in the complex plane. Okay, it's important to realize that complex plane means that I have the reals by the imaginaries, right? So remember that like if I were going to graph, I don't know, 3 plus 4i, that would be a 1, 2, 3 in the real plane, the real axis, and then over here in the imaginary axis, I would be going 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's a point up here, okay? And if we were doing it about like 0, that would be down to here, right? And the closest distance from there, well, that's what, 5, because I have a 3, 4, 5 triangle, okay? So this would be a 5. So the radius of convergence in this little one would be a 5. And I have this example. I'm going to talk about this one here, okay? And I really just want to make the radius of convergence in the interval, okay? And also identify any singular points. After I do this example, I am going to stop this video, and I'm going to make another video with one example on how to solve a differential equation using power series. All right, so to solve this one here, first I need to try to tackle this. That's my a sub 2 of x. I should be setting it equal to 0. And, of course, then I get x is equal to plus or minus i, right? So these are the singular points. That means all the other ones are good, right? Now, the radius of convergence, if I'm centering this at a equals 0, which is very typical for us in this class, what's the shortest distance from 0 to i? Well, plus or minus i, this would be an i, right? Which I shouldn't put an i there because this is the imaginary axis. This is a 1, and then this is a negative 1. Well, the shortest distance from here up to here, right, either one of those is just 1. So the radius of convergence, the radius of convergence is 1. Okay, then if, can we create the interval? If the radius of convergence is 1, right, we did this in 6, 1, but we kind of did it backwards. If it, the radius of convergence is 1 and I'm centered at, remember, we usually choose a to be 0, well, then that means that the interval has to be negative 1 to 1, okay? And that's, a, that's exactly how we would do it, okay, exactly how we would do it. If I would have ended up having like a 4i there, okay, then of course that would be a 4. The shortest distance would be a 4. The radius of convergence would turn into a, if I make this a 4, then this would turn into a 4, and then these would turn into 4s. Okay, if I had a 4 there and a 3 here, then all of a sudden the shortest distance wouldn't be a 4, it would be a 5, right? Because that's 9 plus 16 is 25. Pythagorean theorem, bring it down. So then these ones would become negative 5 to 5. Very common, just to do it exactly like that. Okay. 
course, this is all based on the idea that we're centering at zero. If I were to center somewhere else, then the problem becomes slightly more tricky. Um, we'd have to do some more geometry, but in general, it's not too terrible. Okay. Now that completes 6.2, like the introduction video. The next video I'm going to be doing is an example over how to use power series to solve a differential equation.